Welcome to Project Fast Fish here on Mike's Motorworks. And this next episode is going to be delivered in two different parts. Part one, we're going to focus on rebuilding door hinges for the e-body and what it takes to get the old skins off. And on part two, we're going to look at doing some patches on the inner structures of the door and putting the new skins on. You don't want to miss it. It all happens right now here on Mike's Motorworks and Project Fast Fish. I apologize for all the background noise, but it is a warm one. I got the doors open and the fans rolling, and there is no air conditioning in here. So yeah, it gets a little warm sometimes. But I wanted to show you this picture right here. This is all that remains of the old rear quarter panel. So as you know, if you're working on an e-body, the quarter panel goes all the way from the door jam all the way to the back of the car to the tail panel and up around this, um, well, wheel well, right? And the reason that I wanted to do the doors first is because I wanted to make sure that the doors were still aligned, you know, with the quarter panel. So I left this part on to make sure of that. Now, right here, I've seen, you've seen this in other videos, so I don't need to zoom in on it, right? But right here, there's a little ridge, right? And that ridge is an accent point throughout the rest of the vehicle. And this ridge is as well, right? So when I put the doors on, I wanna make sure that they are aligned here. Okay, so there's one way to ensure that's going to happen. Well, two ways to ensure that's going to happen. One, we got to make sure that the hinges are in place. And two, we got to make sure that we use door seals. Okay, that way we can make sure that there is a proper, well, gapping from the door in and out and so on, right? So that's what we're going to do first is go ahead and repair and rebuild my door hinges. Now there's two ways to do it. You can either buy your own or build them. I chose to rebuild them because they were in great shape. Let's talk hinges for a minute, especially when dealing with the doors. Now there's the trunk hinges, the hood hinges, but specifically with the door hinges, all right? As far as I am with the car, it would be silly for me to not re, uh, repair, all right, or refurbish the existing hinges or completely replace them. Now, how you do that is 100% up to you. If your hinges are in decent shape like mine are, okay, then absolutely go ahead and refurbish them, all right, rebuild them. Nothing wrong with doing that. And then if you're one of those people like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to rebuild it. I just want to put and slap new ones on there. Great. New ones are available through your big three manufacturers. That's your classic industries, year one, AMD, so on and so forth. Now, um, the reason I'm rebuilding mine is one, my hinges are in great shape. Two, it's time to go ahead and start looking at the doors. And since the doors are going to be reskinned, I want to make sure everything is in line. I want to make sure everything matches up. I'm going to be looking at gaps, so on and so forth. So using the old hinges as they were, I sure would hate to be in a position where I hang the door, get everything in spot using the old hinges. And then when it comes time to rebuild, finally realize, oh crap, I should have done this when I should have had fresh hinges on there. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. Looking at our hinges here, we could see there are a couple of different things. Now this is specific for the uh, Mopar E-Body. Uh, so your um, Chrysler, I'm not sorry Chrysler, your Dodge Challenger or your Plymouth Barracuda. Notice that the pin is on this side here. So this is the top or the head of the pin itself, right? And I went ahead and marked these T and T so I know how to line those back up when it comes time to do that. Here you can see where that spring is and I've got an easy way to remove that. And of course you can see where this pin is gonna be driven through here. Now there is no brass in here so these actually have to be reamed out to get the new pin in there because this new pin right here is a little bit larger than the pin it came with from the factory. Why did they do that? Well, hello, if it has any wear in there, okay, you simply ream it out or drill it out and you match the size of the pin and boom, there you go. Even if it's a little bit oblong, it'll work. Now, if you're one of those guys going, oh, it's not gonna be precise, it's not gonna be perfect. 
well then that's fine. Buy yourself a new kit, right? And that's perfectly all right. Now the top hinge here, I did the same thing where I labeled it, right? I got a T over here and a T over here. And of course you got the head of the pin here. And then inside there, you could see where the bushings are. Now overall, these are in good shape. There wasn't a lot of wiggle here or there. So I'm like, you know what? These really don't need to be done here. The other side did. But I'm like, why in the world would I rebuild one and not rebuild the other? So that's what I'm going to do here. I'll go ahead and leave the uh, place where I got the hinge rebuild kit. Uh, these can be found online. Um, while Year One and Classic and um, uh, AMD did not have these in stock, I was able to source this through eBay. And uh, so you can find the rebuild kits that are out there. Now, when you order them, they come with a couple different things. And I'm, I have the old ones here to show a comparison real quick. All right, so for the top hinges, right, you will use two bushings and their supplied pin. For the lower uh, hinges, you will use the supplied pin, and of course they supply you with a new spring. And um, of course that spring is definitely helpful, and I'll show you why here in just a second. Now, looking at these bushings, I went ahead and replaced these because you could see comparing to the old ones, there's a lot difference or a big difference in the overall thickness of the ring, so they're definitely worn out. And if you look at this pin here, you can see where it's not straight. It's kind of dipping down or kind of limp on this side. Now the bigger pin over here was in good shape, but I will note that the uh, door return spring had some wear where it ran over the wheels, uh, where it keeps the, um, you know, it goes over the wheels here on this part of the, uh, of the hinge itself, and so I went ahead and replaced that. I thought about keeping them, but I'm like, look, if I'm going this far and changing these out, I might as well change that out as well. There's no use in relying on old springs, righty? Now, um, your hinges might be in a good shape, and this is gonna be a judgment call for you. Do you wanna go through the steps to rebuild them, or do you wanna replace them? So if you wanna replace and rebuild your hinges, this is how it's gonna be done. Here are the basic tools that you're gonna to need to make this happen. Now understand that some of these are optional. You might have your own way of doing things, but this is what I use to make this happen and what I'm gonna show here on video, alrighty? So we have a drill with a, this is a 13 30 seconds drill bit. This is gonna be used for the lower hinge to ream that out. All right, and I'm gonna do this by hand. I'm not gonna use a drill press. If you have a drill press, great, use it, but I'm gonna do it by hand. I got some pry bars. I got a ball peen hammer. I got a small hammer. It has kind of like this uh, a little plastic end and a rubber end. I got a rubber mallet. I got a small punch, all right, to help drive the pins out. I got another punch to help drive the bushings out. And then over here, we have an air hammer, which helps get the pins out. And then we're gonna use this piece of aluminum because aluminum is softer than the steel on the hammer so we don't damage the heads on the pins to help drive it back in. Now, I also am gonna use some WD-40 to help lubricate the pins as I push those and drive those back in. Let's look at this top hinge here. The first thing that I've already done, as I pointed out a few seconds ago, was I labeled the top of the hinge so I know how they match up, so on and so forth. Ideally, they'll be sitting on the car, right? And then they match up and they sit like this, right? This is the door itself. So if this was hanging on the car, the door would be going this way. This would be the body of the car, right? And the front would be going that way, or yeah, close enough, yeah, that way, right? So the hinge opens up here, you get the idea, right? So there you go. Now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to the vise, and I'm gonna go ahead and punch this pin out and then go ahead and remove the bushings. Now, I don't know if you could see it, but the pin here does have a pointed edge, right? So I can drive it out with just the punch, but honestly, it's much easier just doing this, right? Take the air hammer, take your pointy end, and just go ahead and pop it once or twice and it should run on out. I say that. There it goes. Take my punch. There she goes. And then my 
another punch. There it goes. Now the bushings are just brass and there are actually two pieces in there. One bushing goes up to right about there. The other one goes to about there. So I'm just gonna take my punch, right? It's big enough just to get in there. I'm gonna feel where that bushing begins and on the other side, right? And just kind of work it out. That one was super easy. I'm gonna do it for this side, just for the camera's sake, right? See if I can do it this way. And boom, taken care of. Let's go to the other bench and put the bushings in this side and this side. Now to put the bushings in, nothing fancy here, right? If you wanted to clean this up with like some pipe cleaners or something like that, you could. Honestly, there's only a little bit of corrosion in there from the pen. I ain't too worried about it, right? So I'm gonna kind of get that initially set there. And remember we were talking about that small little hammer with a little plastic end on it? That's what you want to use here. You don't want to use a big ball peen hammer because this is just bronze or brass. Uh, you don't want to mess that up, right? So gentle taps. Nice and snug, nice good fit there. We're gonna do the same for the other side. Now again, I didn't want to use my big rubber mallet for that because of the accuracy, right? Because, you know, trying to get that into there and then not damage that bushing. That's why I went ahead and used that small plastic hammer, right? Now that it's time for reassembly, we've got a couple things that we're going to note here. The first thing I'm going to note is looking at the um, pieces and the parts of the um, hinge itself, I note that through one eye, all right, it is not threaded. The other side does have, um, I, I say the term thread, that's not the proper term, uh, maybe knurled or something. I don't know the proper machining terms, right? But you'll notice there's a little kind of like groove or striations inside here, right? So you want that to be your top because when you look at the top of the pin, all right, that's how it sets up in there, righty? So I'm gonna go ahead and let's see, make sure that this assembly is uh, properly set here. So we have the bracket that'll sit like this, matches with the end here, again, the knurled end to the knurled end, right? And then we have our plastic piece that goes, not plastic, I'm sorry, your other piece with the bushing that goes here, kind of line them up, make sure everything is set. So remember the tools that I showed you, and right now we're driving that pin back into place. So I'm gonna use my cheap scrap of aluminum, and I'm gonna go ahead and use that to kind of help push that into place. All right, so I'm gonna just take my hammer here. Now, if we wanted to use the, um, uh, the pneumatic hammer, you could do this, but I think it's gonna be easier just to do this. We are getting in there, it's just gonna take some work. And what I'm trying to do is really keep that without banging the mess out of the head of the pin, right? That's all I'm simply trying to do at this point. Almost there. Now, if you wanted to, to take the last few blows to make it really get set into place there, you can do that. And there we go. Now, if you're somebody who's looking at this saying, oh man, I didn't want to use a hammer on it because I'm worried about distorting this metal right here. Look how thick it is, all right? The chances of you distorting that with a 16 uh, ounce hammer, probably slim to nil, all right? I was more concerned about preserving the uh, head of that pin. But as you can see, we are in, we are set, and that is as tight as it gets right there. 
when it comes time to start working on this lower hinge, all right, there's a couple of things that I'm really replacing here. And there's only two pieces. Piece number one is the pin itself. And as I said earlier, this pin from uh, the uh, rebuild kit is larger than the factory pin, okay? And they do that because it's not bushed, all right? So there's no bushings on here. So I am going to use a 13 30 seconds inch drill once I get this hammered out to go ahead and ream both one, two, three, four points away. And I'm just going to use a standard drill, okay? I'm not going to use a drill press. Why? Well, the drill press I have here isn't big enough, and two, I don't think it's really warranted, okay? And then two, I'm also going to replace this hinge right here, which looks complicated because it's kind of pressed in here, pressed in here, but if you use the right levers, it becomes super simple. Let me show you. So here is my pin right there. Let me go ahead and get my little shock absorbers on, if you will. Won't tell you what my brother calls them, but it is what it is. He does this stuff on a daily basis, right? So I'm just going to drill this or pop this guy out. It'll take a second. There it goes. And then finish just like we did the other one. Just take your punch, pop it through. There it goes. Loosen this guy out. Let go, my ego. There it goes. And now we're gonna go ahead and drill out one and two. Let me grab that drill. Again, 13, 30 seconds. Here we go. Almost got away from me there. And there it goes. And do the same thing over here. I'm gonna grab it a little bit firmer this time. Mm. There we go. Holding it in the vise. Take this side to the top hinge, basically turn it just a little bit to loosen it up. All right, it didn't quite pop all the way out there, so I'm gonna go ahead and relieve some pressure on the vise. Lift it up just a little bit. I'm basically just trying to free up this part of the hinge right there. I'm gonna do the same thing again. And this should relieve it, and there it goes. All right, let me grab the other spring. Now with that spring removed, it's time to go ahead and put it back into its proper place. And to do that, it's pretty simple. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of preload it like this, okay? So notice what I did here is I just simply put the edge here, the tip in here, slide it through, and of course the other edge, this is the round side, goes to the other side over here. So again, note here, you got your two kind of loops going on. You got like a square loop up here, and kind of like a, um, a rounded loop down here. Your rounded loop goes to the outside here. Alrighty. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply put this in the vise. I'm gonna tighten it up, trying not to mar the thingy, right? And just like before, I'm just gonna use my leverage points to go ahead and get that into place. Hopefully I left myself enough room between here and the camera. And down we go. Let's see. Nope, almost had catastrophe there. Try this a little bit tighter if I can get it. If not, I'm gonna have to do it without it. <clears throat> I 
and got that into place just like that all right simple way to change out the spring there now what i'm going to do is go ahead and put the pin back and make sure we're in a good spot there So again, I've already marked off which side's the top, which side's the bottom, okay? So I'm gonna assemble these back as they are top and top, top and top. And if you didn't mark yours, it's really easy to see if you got it right or not. Simply look to see if the wheels here, okay, these are the little stays that, you, that kinda allow the spring to pass to keep the door open, okay? If they match up, with the squared side, not the round side, hey, you've done it correctly, all righty? So let me get this guy back into place here. There it goes. All right, again, this, the head goes on the top. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my rubber mallet, not my other hammer. I'm gonna use the hammer for the last couple of strikes, right? But I'm going to use my rubber mallet to kind of get it into place there. Had a good drive through. It went through to the other side. Perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the best spot to drive this into home, if you will. It's kind of off camera here, and I'm sorry about that. Let's put the camera in a better spot. Now what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to drive this pin back home, if you will, right? So here we go. Take this point, and I'm just going to hit it a couple times with good firm force to drive that into place. Hopefully it won't damage that head too much. Make sure we got enough leverage on it. Well, I'm gonna take a little bit more than that. And one more, just for love. Here we go. And sure enough, we got a good, good hinge there. Confident now, when I go ahead and put the doors on, it will not have any kind of, well, looseness or play in the doors to ensure that everything lines up nicely. Now, with the door hinges rebuilt, it is time to go ahead and start taking the door skins off the old door panels. Check out how this works. Now, what you see me doing is I am working the grinder on the edge of the door skin, okay? Because it is just a single piece of metal folded in on itself. A simple grinder is all it takes to remove that. And you see me working slowly back and forth, back and forth, till I can see the opening and effectively the three different layers of metal. If you can see it here, this is what we're looking for. See where it's separating? from the pieces here. So you have the door skin here. You have the door skin when it wrapped around. So we're just cutting the very edge off, right? Or grinding the very edge off to expose that metal. Now, when we get the other sides off, this should just essentially pop off there. As you can see, that's consistent all the way, one side down the other. And now I just gotta do the other three sides.
Now, regarding this piece right here, this is a piece that the door skin actually overlaps on, right? So you see here that the, uh, the part where the uh, side window goes onto and braces the side window, you see this piece right here that runs on top of that. That's actually part of the door skin that gets welded onto this piece. Now, there's two ways to handle this. You could either, one, cut this out because it's tack weld over here and over here, right? Or you could do like I did and go ahead and remove it, your choice. Now, if you choose to remove it like I did, then you're gonna have to get in here um, any way you can, right? To cut out these spot welds and then remove this piece separately, right? I'm gonna do uh, a, use the stone on my grinder to take care of that. Others might choose to go ahead and try to drill that out, but honestly, that's kind of hard to drill out because of where it's located at, right? So I'm just gonna use my stone, come back with my impact hammer, pull that out, and then I'll be able to attack the rest of the door. Now, with the door skins removed, it's time to go ahead and take the door skins to, well, the media blaster, all right? I thought about this and I was like, do I want a media blaster? Do I want a wire wheel? And I decided that the media blaster would be much better at getting into the little intricate spaces that I may not be able to reach well with the wire brush and other manual, you know, tools. So let's get this to the media blaster get it taken care of and brought back to us. That way we can go ahead and start the process of putting the door skins on.